You might want to start us off. Yeah, uh, you talked about sustaining success. Yeah. How significant is this season in starting with that? I, I think it's every season's important. Each season, I think, has to be incrementally building upon the season before. And so I think you've seen that in the first two years with Coach B. And I think we're all anticipating that this third season will be another step forward. And I'm not going to sit here and define what that means. But I, I think we're all excited about the momentum that we started last year and are confident in, in the offseason we've had and, and look forward to another, another step forward this season. When Brett wants to bring in a Jimmy Leonard, talks to you about it, is it a pretty simple process or is it something that, that you guys talk extensively about how this is going to work? It's relatively simple on my end. I, I think that you know when you have an opportunity to hire somebody like, like Jim, it, it doesn't require a lot of deliberation on, on my part. I give Brett a lot of credit um, for having those kinds of relationships and, and being in a position to attract somebody like Jimmy. I think it speaks volumes about what we are building here and about uh, the way he's viewed within the industry. Um, but, but then to be able to work through some of the details and figure out exactly, okay, well, what does this role look like? How is it going to be handled from an administrative perspective? Um, so just thanks to Jimmy, we're excited about having him on board. And, and uh, I've, I know him not nearly as well as Coach does, obviously, but a uh, great guy, great football mind, and, and there's no question he'll be a tremendous uh, asset for us as we get into this year. Josh, is there, if, if there was one thing you could change tomorrow about NAL or transfer portal, what would it be? Uh, I, I think following along with some of the things that the commissioner said, I, and I've said this in some other settings with a few of you in the room, I, I think that it's just trying to separate out what is really true NIL and, and what has become something very different. And, and so I think the term I've used is calling a spade a spade. Let's, let's refer to what things are. And, and I think we've developed this because this is the only way the system permits these kinds of transactions to occur. And so ultimately, I'd like to see us rework the system so that it can be a more authentic system that, that allows things to flow the way that I think they, they should. So in other words, what collectives function as bringing that in-house, like universities being able to collect that money and dispense it? I, I think allowing universities right now, because the, the NCAA rules don't permit us to provide certain benefits to student athletes, this system has developed in some ways as an end around to that, that those restrictions. And so uh, that's sort of had the unintended byproduct of pushing control, quote unquote, outside the umbrella of the athletic departments. I, I don't think that's necessarily the best way for us to operate. And so could we tweak some of the rules to allow us to more directly provide some of those benefits to the student athletes, would allow, which would then permit programs like ours to remain in control of, of how those resources are being managed. Two different legislations uh, announced or proposed. What do we make of those? Kind of two different I think they're promising. I, I think they're promising. I, I think that Unlike some other things that I've seen in the last couple of years, they, they show, uh, I would say, a broader awareness of our industry, I think a better understanding of the dynamics on our campuses. So I, I, th I thought both were, were had some real potential. Josh, in the what last... Happened to, what happens at Western happens when it's across multiple sports? Does that make you look in-house just to make sure everything is okay or maybe have conversations about that this is not acceptable? No question. I, I think any time there is a, call it a crisis on any campus across the country in any fashion over the last seven years, any administrator would would be missing the boat if they didn't take that opportunity to, to look at their own program and to make sure that you're tightening your policies, you're reinforcing your messaging. And, and we've certainly done that at the University of Illinois. And, and Again, Northwestern has policies. They have education. They do a lot of the same things that we do. Um, and so it's trying to identify where any gaps might exist and reinforce some of that messaging back to your coaches and ultimately to your student athletes as they come back on campus this fall. So, I mean, is that going to be a topic you bring up? I mean, if you meet with every athlete, is that going to be a top of the list type of like? No question. Yeah, no question. There, there are a handful of things that I think have risen to the surface over the last 12 months. We always try and keep a running list, and uh, that will be on the list for sure, of things that we'll talk about and emphasize as we head into this new year. Josh, have you spoken with Derek Bragg in the last couple of weeks? And just, just by text. Just by text. Just by text. you've shared with him or things he's tried to engage with you about just how to go about handling a crisis like this? Nothing I'd want to share. I, I think we all understand the, the challenges that, that Northwestern's facing right now, and, and I'd rather keep those conversations between the two of us. But I, uh, it, it's not that far from 
Champaign to Evanston, both realistically or physically and uh, sort of uh, symbolically. And, and so we're, we're always aware of what our colleagues are going through and, and try and provide support and, and, um, uh, and, and support in any way we can. Just what's it mean to you that Brett's saying, I found my home. Um, I mean, people are talking about him possibly going elsewhere. After, like, what's that mean to you that, that he's committed to this? What's that mean for the program? I, I think it means everything to this program. I, I think that when you find people who provide the kind of leadership that you're looking for, who share the values that you do, who have been able to do the things that he's done here in the first two years of his tenure, uh, you, you want some opportunity to, to prolong that, to, to create some uh, some opportunity to do it on, on a long-term scale. And, uh, and so when we got into our, our contract talks uh, after this last season, there were a, a lot of points to those discussions, obviously, but uh, longevity was central to that and, and his willingness to, to commit to the university was was notable and, and something that was um, really exciting, exciting for all of us. Obviously that was valuable to you too <coughs> as an athletic director to know that no compete and all that. No question, no question. Yeah, I think that, um, again, <coughs> excuse me, I think that you know, the, the chance to work together and to know that we're going to have that kind of runway in front of us, it just changes some of your thought processes. It, it, in some other environments, you have to make decisions that are based on what's in our next best interest. And occasionally that conflicts with what might be in our best long-term interests. And so when you're both acting on the long-term future of a program, then it, it allows you to align uh, more holistically around many different elements connected to the program. Josh, it was 2001, <clears throat> but then 2002, the fall off of seven, it didn't even correlate into more success. What did you take from those experiences, either here watching or from afar, that you can use now to, to propel the program? I think we just have to stay hungry. We, we have to continually look for ways to push the program forward, to raise the agenda, uh, raise the level, raise the expectation, and, and ultimately, <clears throat> Sorry, I've got something in my throat. Um, but, but ultimately, I think that falls on me. It falls on the coaching staff to, to make sure that we're uh, keeping people from becoming complacent, that we're continuing to raise the bar, to, to look for new challenges and new opportunities. Uh, and, and so uh, I, I think that's, that's the biggest thing that we're trying to do now is, is certainly we're aware of some of those situations in the past, but we're not going to be defined by the past. We're going to be defined by the present and the future. And, and that's the part that we now have a hand in creating. And so uh, we've, we've taken that role very seriously and, and looking forward to the season. You mentioned the you know, Canada's golf outing in July, you know, the, kind of the calendar flips to the, you know, the new you know, academic school year. Just what, maybe big picture-wise, from the athletic partner, are you looking for maybe to – well, I, I think it's just, again, getting getting started on the right foot, welcoming in a new group of student athletes. Uh, it's always exciting for me when we bring our first years on campus and you see their wide eyes and, and just how excited they are to be a part of our program. And, and then to fast forward to May and, and to greet our graduates who were are, who are sitting in those same first year seats four years earlier. That's the thing I love about college sports is to just watch that growth and development from the 500 people who are part of our program and we can sit here and talk about the transfer portal and yeah there's a lot of ins and outs and some of those faces change now maybe more than they used to but at the end of the day we're still about educating and preparing young people for the rest of their lives and and I know some people may think that's a cliche and some people may may think it's inauthentic but at the core that's why I chose to get into this business and, and I think that most of the people in our program would say the same thing and so um, I, I, the beginning of every year brings that that freshness, that that new that new look, that new opportunity, and, and so um, you know we're looking forward to that again. Josh is obviously an obvious <coughs> component to Brett and what he's been able to do, but what stood out to you about maybe the totality of what he does as a guy leading the football program? I, I think it's and I've I've talked at length about him. It, it's just so many different things that he brings to the table. It, it starts with his work ethic, his kind of it's, again first in the building, the last one to leave at night, his ability to connect with people. Uh, he's incredibly relatable. I think you can put him in a room with people from all kinds of different backgrounds and he instantly finds a connection. He finds common ground. Uh, he's very genuine. Uh, I think our players sensed that. They sensed it from the very first meeting where they were with our, our uh, team. And, and then his attention to, to detail, and uh, you guys have all seen that. I mean, he, he has a plan for what to do in 
almost every circumstance on the field and, and off of it and and not just one but alternate plans and backup plans and and so it's I, I give him credit because operating a football program at this level today is very different than it was 20 years ago you've got a staff of 50 people you've got our team obviously but but you're also recruiting the next group you've got the transfer portal you've got name names like this all these different things are happening his ability to process and digest information and to navigate in a very fluid space has been incredibly impressive and, and I think will be a uh, major contributing factor to his long-term success with us. Josh, did Sarah's departure surprise you at all? Um, not, not particularly, no. I, I, I think that um, you know, Sarah's an incredibly talented coach. We were thrilled with the time that we had with her. Um, I think that uh, bringing in uh, Petros last year I, I think was obviously a, uh, a big change in that program. Um, and, and you always want people to have some, some opportunity there to get to know one another and ultimately to make some decisions about what makes sense for themselves as they move into the next part of their life. I know she had some things going on in her personal life as well that, that made some change interesting to her. And, um, so we're excited for her. Obviously, Texas is a great program coming off a national championship. And so uh, I think she'll have a great opportunity down in Austin. What's important for you in that hire? <clears throat> um, I, I think that just really taking advantage of the the reputation and, and success that that petros has had he's got such tremendous uh, background in, in track and field and cross country i think we've we put that program on a different trajectory now and and i know that he's had some some really exciting conversations with some candidates who would, would come with tremendous background tremendous experience uh, so I, I think it would just be another important step in the elevation of, of illinois track and cross country why was the extension for tyra important at least to get it done. Well, I, I think that with, with Tyra, you look at what she's been able to do over the entirety of her tenure and, and in our softball program's history, we never had anything quite like that. She, she brings just tremendous integrity, great leadership. Uh, and the thing that I th hope you guys have seen from me is that you know, we're, we're not going to hesitate to, to make those commitments to people when we find folks who, again, embody the values that we believe in at the University of Illinois, who treat their student athletes the right way, who are handling their business both on the field and off of it. And, and Tyra checks all those boxes for us. Uh, she's, a, she's a tremendous ambassador for our program, really pleased with the success. Obviously, this year wasn't the year that any of us expected it to be, but didn't change the fact that, that we believe in her and in her long-term leadership with, uh, with the softball team. And so thankful to her for her trust in us and, and candidly wanting to continue to be a part of our program as well. It's hugely important. Uh, I think we've, we've talked at length about why football is so important to the future of Illinois athletics. There are a lot of tangible and intangible reasons for that. One of the biggest tangible reasons is it, it drives our business. It drives the business of fighting Illini sports. And so to be able to, to sell those 9,500 tickets, to be able to count on that revenue as we uh, experience a lot of the raising, rising costs associated with a program like ours is important. But I think just as importantly is getting those people in the building and getting that energy and making sure that Memorial Stadium feels like a destination that people want to be a part of, both from a fan perspective, from a player perspective, from a recruit perspective. That environment has to be one of the best in the country, and, and in order to do that, we got to put people in the, in the seats. And, and so just can't say thank you enough to our fans uh, for the responsiveness that they've shown, the excitement that they have right now for Illinois football is off the charts, and I'm hopeful that we'll continue to see that grow in, in the months and years ahead. This will be the last four years. <clears throat> Gosh, I mean, the season ticket sales obviously has been a big success. So how excited are you to see 